How you doing? My name is Brian Reardon. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, and this is my 1998 Coachman Starflight van. Yeah, my love of vans is probably paired up with my love of travel. And for the last 15 years for work, I've been traveling all over the world doing production. If you're the type of person who likes adventure, once you start adventuring more and you see more of the world, you realize like, travel and relationships with people that you meet is really the best education that you can get, in my opinion. So I got addicted to that experience. It's just kind of a perpetual state. I bought my first four wheel drive van in 2010 after experiencing where that can take you and the amount of places you can get to, I realized I wanted to step it up a little bit and get into a van that I could stand up in, have a shower, a kitchen, and actually have a living space so that I can get out there and have long weekends a week, two weeks, or potentially live in it full time. In the full wheel drive ability market, there's only a few options. I was looking into the sprinters, but the fact that they're all-wheel drive, I know the limitations of all-wheel drive, and I really wanted a solid front axle. And with the availability of four-wheel drive kits for Ford vans, I knew that I wanted a Ford chassis. When you do the Ford conversion, you're using F-250 parts. There's parts readily available, so if you ever had something break down, you're not looking for something proprietary, just a Ford truck in the front end. With the Sprinter option, they don't have any real locking options. And when it comes to off-roading, independent front suspension is never gonna be as good in articulating as a solid front axle. So when it comes to actually getting off-grid and going into places where a Jeep can go, as long as you have the width and the height clearance, this is gonna be a much more capable off-grid machine. So it's a 98 Coachman Starflight with a 5.4 V8 gas engine. It has plenty of power because we re-geared the axles to 513. It has a six inch U-joint off-road full-wheel drive conversion. It's their stage two kit, Fox 2.0 shocks and uh, Dynatrack limited slip differential. Up front, we have an Illumines front bumper with some uh, LED lights, 12,000 pound Ward winch. I bedlinered the whole van, including the grill. The headlights on the van are projector beam and they're from a company called Vantage Optics. I've Raptor linered it myself. It's really easy to do. You just want to practice on a piece of plywood before you start spraying your vehicle. Everything on the van's been replaced. On the exterior, windshield wipers, the mirrors, the antenna, Every light, even the clearance lights are LED. The porch light on the side is now LED. I have a 10 foot Fiamma awning that's brand new. The wheels are custom made. I need to have them custom made in order to handle the weight of the vehicle and to create the right offset so that the wheels sat where I wanted them to. The 37 inch Nexans can handle about 3,970 pounds per tire. So if you're doing a single rear wheel conversion, they're a good option. There aren't too many that can handle that kind of weight. All of these racks I made and they have a, an exterior plate and on the inside, they have a matching interior plate. So it's a sandwich grab on the, the body. It's not just screws drilled into the fiberglass. Another really cool feature is this outdoor shower. When you're done with your day at the beach, it's nice to rinse off and if you're in a really remote location, it's nice to just bathe naked outside. It's a lot larger of a shower than the inside one. All the lights were replaced with LED running lights. I made the rear bumper. It's made out of quarter inch steel. It has a set of lights in it. One's a turn signal, one's a backup light. These rear cargo boxes are aluminum. They literally weigh three pounds when they're empty and they were a cheap alternative to something like what an Illuminous would sell for six or $700 per box. I built these boxes on a swing arm so that I could access underneath the bed. The uh, rear ladder I made out of one and a quarter inch steel bar and the rear bumper I cut it in this little hole right here which is like really your first step up onto the ladder. So before I did any of the work up here, I recoated the entire roof with rubber and then I painted it with white Raptor liner. I replaced both of the Fantastic fans and I replaced the air conditioner which was an old unit that didn't work and now it's a Dometic Penguin 2 low profile. In the back here we have two roto packs to get unstuck. Axe and a shovel, 300 watts of solar, and a high lift jack. So this is all storage jack so I can change the tire. It's got a nice little light in here, water filter, sawzall, and a bunch of tools. Power hookups, and then a bunch of recovery gear, straps, winches, antifreeze, foothold for the high lift jack, tire puncture kit. You gotta have a mascot, you know? Grogu, relative of Yoda. He's not steered us wrong yet. These seats, were green velvet. It was just looked like you were in a 
Prince music video. The ceiling's all bamboo, and I finished off the headliner trim with a, a gray suede to match the front seats. DVD player in the front with a backup camera. I also have a front facing camera. You can switch with the touch of a button. Curtains in a van is always a big topic. You know, it's one of those things like, do you buy something that goes in the window and sticks on with a magnet and then you have to stow it or do you put something across the back here but that cuts off the access to the front seat so i built this track and then sew these curtains and then put these little button clasps on so that they shut all the light out now it's too dark you're still able to swivel the seat and keep the seat in the living space and they just deploy really quickly you want to be gone real quick you don't have to stow everything space is limited so they've been great so the concept of the van from inception was always to be a four passenger, four seat belt van with the ability to sleep two adults and two children. When I was planning the van, I knew that I needed to have a legitimate passenger seat set up with two seat belts and a car seat. So this is actually a, a Ford Transit two up seat and it's built on a custom steel frame that's bolted to the vehicle's frame in four places. All of the electronics for the van are underneath this seat. This panel can come off and then there's a panel over there that you can get to some of the electronics, but for the most part, if you were to work on the electronic system, you would have to take the seat out with four bolts. It's not no big deal. But at the heart of the system is a Victron Energy 3000 watt inverter charger. I have five 100 amp hour Battleborn lithium ion batteries. So we run a Vitamix every day. It has a six gallon electric water heater and an induction cooktop. There's no propane in the vehicle and the generator's gone. So in order to run the the air conditioning we have to be we have to be plugged in. In the original RV, it was a TV and two cabinets on the side. I didn't need a TV and I really wanted the sleeping space, so we converted this into an area for two children or a single adult. I have had an adult sleep up here. It's a little bit claustrophobic height-wise, but you can fit with your feet diagonally in the corner and your head over here. Night light or reading light. This pad here is an insert for the, the bed in the back. The whole process of building the van came with a multitude of decisions and there's always that decision whether to DIY it. When it came down to it, I knew I could do the inside, but it was more important for me to have that return on investment and have that quality of build. It's a really nice peace of mind knowing that everything's built correctly and the longevity and quality is gonna bring you that return on investment if you do decide to sell your van in the future. So all the woodwork in here is black walnut trim and ceiling and bamboo cabinets. The floor is made out of cork, which is uh, nice because it's sound dampening and it's naturally insulating. What's this stuff called? German vinyl. Oh, I forget the name of it. That stuff's amazing though. There's a lot of storage in the van, tons of overhead space. This particular cabinet is actually 12 feet long. It goes the full length of the van. All the countertops in here are made out of rich light. It's a really nice compound, eco-friendly. It's actually a really condensed paper product. We love it, it's super durable. It's easy to clean. If you did scratch it, you can wet sand the scratches out. Uh, this has a electric induction cooktop. Uh, we have a six gallon electric water heater for the shower and the sink. I also have a four stage water filtration system so that you can drink the water. It's a little shark the best. Lots of storage in the van. Got all the smoothie parts, plenty of space for everything. The fridge is an isotherm CR130. Plenty of space for all your goods. It's a freezer, fridge freezer, and we can get about a week's worth of food in there. It's a really nice 12 volt eco-friendly refrigerator. Tons of space up here, extra storage. Oh my God, honey, look, they have a hanging closet. The guys are like, it's four wheel drive. The women just want a hanging closet. A junk drawer all slam latches the van being so small and everything being compact the kitchen's really small so we put a lagoon table mount right here which really adds to your your cook prep surface and it just swivels right out of the way when you're in bed mode and you're sleeping at night this is really really handy highly recommend these curtains i made they're all hand sewn they're double layered so that they're blackout i didn't want anything that made noise when we were going down the road these curtains don't make any noise at all close really quickly there's little magnets right here to block out the light. If you need to clean it, you can just pop it off and slide these off. This is on a magnet and these are 500 pound drawer slides. So this comes out, bed's real easy to make. Just fits right in. And I'm 5'11 and I fit this 
a long way, no problem at all. The cabin heater in here is a Wabasto and it sips gasoline right out of the tank. It keeps it warm in here in really cold climates, but I think if I had insulated the floor, it would have been a, lot, a little bit more R value. But the cork floor helps a lot. It's pretty quick. Um, this goes all the way through, so that's pretty handy. There's a whole bunch of storage underneath the bed and the side next to the water tank, which is a 50 gallon water tank. The bathroom is not the Taj Mahal, but does the job. Got rid of the regular toilet in black tank and replaced it with a nature's head composting toilet. By having a, a composting toilet, the soil in there lasts about three months. The decision to get rid of the black tank and the toilet was actually just because it was the one thing that was kind of inhibiting the length of my stay. The van base price was 9,000, which was a steal. The full wheel drive components, installation, labor was about 25,000. Once I got the van back from U Joint Off Road, I drove it back across country, and then the first thing I did was gut all of the original RV components. I found a great outfit in San Diego, Johnson's Custom Van Solutions, one builder and one 12 volt specialist, and they work on one van at a time. It took about three months. All in all, with labor and all the high end components that are in this van, the interior cost around $60,000 to convert. Thanks for checking out my van. If you want to see more pics, I'm on Instagram, starflight underscore van. I hope this inspired you guys to get out there and enjoy the great outdoors and start your own build. Thanks. <laughs>